in this video, we're gonna talk about cleaning your paint. Now we're gonna talk about the tools and products that you need, the process, when you should or shouldn't clay your paints, when to know, how to, to, a bunch of information coming up on this video. So for starters, how many times do you need to clay per year or per whatever time frame you have? Honestly, in my experience, you probably only need to do it maybe once at max maybe twice per year unless something funny happens where you get paint overspray on your vehicle, whether you start to park your car somewhere that's like that a lot of like uh, tar and debris and like iron particles are falling on it. At that point, yes, you may have to up the frequency, but generally uh, speaking, just a blanket statement, once, maybe twice a year, but after you either wash clay and wax it or wash clay polish and then wax or ceramic coat it, you're pretty much good unless you just put it in a very harsh environment. If it's garage kept, maybe not even once a year. If it's outside in the, in the elements and it's raining a lot, snow and such like that, then yeah, maybe once or twice per year. But ideally is like once you do it, you're going to maintain it and you're not going to need it as much again unless something funny happens where you do need to give it its attention again. Now as far as clay media, there's so many options on the market now. This is a clay mitts, you have pads, you have discs, you have bars, you have gloves, I'm certain someone has made that already. So don't get too caught up on this one. This is just a nano skin clay mitt on the fine grade, which is a blue, I believe. Um, and this is what I'll be using, but essentially you can use the same thing you're gonna learn here on your own vehicle, regardless of what clay media you're using. Also, don't get too caught up in what I'm using. This is Optimum Norens diluted as a clay lube. You can go down to your local auto parts store and get the, um, the Mother's Clay Kit. I think that's the one, Mother's Clay Kit. Yeah, it brings two clay bars, clay lubricant, and a towel. That works fine too. Whatever you can purchase in your budget, whatever you like, go with that. Now, the reason why I like the clay mitt is just because if you drop it, you just gotta rinse it off and you can still use it. You can use it for longer video. Um, vehicles, I believe so, compared to like a clay bar. The backside is microfiber, so you can still place it on a surface and not worry about it getting contaminants or whatever while you're not using it. So when it comes to claying, it's like, and look at this condition, like it's in pretty bad condition. So if you're gonna polish a vehicle, I'm not too worried on the washing or claying process that I'm, I'm being super careful and not installing any more swords and scratches. I mean, look at the paint, it's trash. Like it's, it's just, it is what it is. Like most vehicles are in this condition. So if someone comes to you and says, hey, whatever, whatever, they want the car polished, what have you, and you're in the clean phase, don't get so sensitive and so like you can't even do one thing because you're gonna install another scratch. If you're about to polish the vehicle, the, the light, very micro light marring or swirls and scratches that you put with this, uh, your, with your clay bar or whatever clay media you're using, it's not significant. It's, it's easily removable, especially compared to the current condition of what that paint is. So specifically, how do you know you need to clay your paint? Well, just assume if, you, if it's older than two years and it's never been clayed, it probably needs to be clayed, but hopefully the microphone, you wanna get like a little, so first of all, if to the touch, right? I've already washed the, this panel, so if to the touch, you, you can hear like some, like if you have like dirt running your, your hands over paint, or if you can feel the coarse like there's actual texture to it and if you can actually hear the sound and it's rough then you need a clay bar your paint what you can also do is get a bag and just put your hand in it and make sure it's kind of silent around you so you can hear it better and hopefully the mic picks it up right here but you can actually hear all the contaminants on the surface and some of that's going to be able to be pulled out some of that may be just like like here, I think there's already some 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 uh, crow's feet already happening here, so that may that may be a problem, I think. But you can almost hear. Let's see if you can hear it here. I'm gonna get close to the. Now you, I, I could feel the texture very very easily. But you can just feel like there's like bumps everywhere on the paint. Hopefully you guys are picking it up on the mic. I have a lav lavalier mic. And before. Before, just to show you real quick, let's see, just just to, just to see if I can show you guys real quick as far as the noise goes. I'm gonna do this small section right here. So I did this small little section right here. You can already tell it's a hundred times smoother than everything else, but I'm gonna put the mic close to see if, it, if you can hear the difference um, between the unclayed and the clayed section.
Hopefully it doesn't look too weird. So hopefully you, you're able to pick that up where it's a huge difference already in just that little section. Um, so that's when you'll know when you need to clay that. You can hear it and you can feel it. Now the actual claying process is very simple. You want to make sure you have plenty of lubricants on the panel because just imagine like the, um, what's it called, those slip and slides where you like, where you put water on the slide and then you slide down when you're like at a park or something. And have you ever seen the videos where that plastic tube that they slide down, it doesn't have any water so the skin literally just catches and they go like feet forward and they start like rolling. It's the same concept with this where if you don't have lubrication, you're simply just gonna create friction between the paint and the clay media that you're using. And instead of like claying and gliding over the paint, you're gonna get stuck somewhere and it's just gonna catch onto the paint and that's when you cause some serious marring. And if you're using the clay bar, it's much easier to, um, to drop the clay bar because as you're gonna be gliding your hand, and it gets stuck somewhere, your hand's gonna keep on traveling, but the, the clay bar is gonna stick right there, and that's when it falls. So make sure you have plenty of lubrication. You don't need to go crazy, but that's enough. And you always wanna have your bottle in your hand, that way when needed, you can just, and this is the Quasar Mercury Pro Bottle, double pump action. And you'll literally just start cling. Now if you're in a hot environment, you might want to do smaller sections. Here, it's in a garage, it's not hot outside. So I can basically do the entire vehicle, to be honest, without anything drying up because it's just, there's no, there's no heat to dry anything up, so. So with this, I could do long strokes because I have that travel with this, um, with this um, claimant. And it's literally just going over the sections. And I don't know if you guys can already tell, but it's already way, way, way smoother. And that, as you can tell, I'm gonna spray it over here to that section. And I'm gonna just cross it. Hopefully you can hear it on the camera. You hear when I go on that side, you hear all the texture. Hopefully it's picking it up on the mic. If not, this looks funny. So this section here is done, boom, that's it. That's all it took. It literally, if I wasn't talking and I wasn't, if I just went at it without trying to explain it, that like this, this whole vehicle could be done in like 15 minutes. And remember, on the horizontal panels, meaning uh, the, the roof, the roof, wow, the roof, the hood, the roof, and if you're working on the, on that right type of vehicle, the trunk lid, the, the, the trunk deck lid, Whatever you say, um, those are the horizontal panels, right? Even the the mirror might have some some um, some yeah some contaminants, but more likely it's the paint painted surfaces because it can really stick to the paint. So the horizontal panels are always going to have more because as the contaminants falls, it's much easier for it to get stuck on a horizontal surface as opposed to if it falls on a vertical surface, meaning your door panels, the front and quarter, rear quarter panels, once the debris falls on there, it's just gonna, since that's at an angle, it's just easier for it to fall off or, or glide off as compared to the uh, horizontal surfaces when it's parked, wherever, it just kind of sits there sometimes and it just kind of bakes into the paint, which causes you to have all that above surface contaminants over time, so. So here's, this is gonna be the worst. Like, unless there's specific overspray somewhere from paint overspray, this section and the roof is gonna be the worst. And I can already tell you that the door panels and all the vertical panels aren't gonna be nowhere near as bad. And just to note that there is a huge difference between paint overspray and just regular above surface contaminants. Because with overspray, and I'm too short to reach that top part, with overspray, a uh, paint overspray, it is much more difficult to get off the paint. Here you can do a few passes and most of it gets removed. With paint overspray, it takes much more work, it takes much more time to actually remove the paint overspray. So it's very important that if you are doing this as a business and a customer comes and asks you, hey, can you remove this, this rough texture to my paint? Well, if it's just regular over, if it's regular, it's just you know it's been it's been you know seven years since he's last clayed it, then yeah, it's probably due for for a, for a clay, which is going to be super easy. Now, if they if you say hey you know 
what happened, how did it cause it. They said, well, you know, just one day I went to, you know, whatever, some parking lot and the next day I, I tried to wash my vehicle and I feel all this rough texture. And they're like, oh, okay, was there construction going on around you or was someone painting around you? And if they, t- if they tell you that, then yeah, it's a completely different... Um, it's a completely different price and service because it's going to take so much more time and effort to get the paint overspray out compared to just regular above surface contaminants. So make sure to note that with your customer and even yourself if you want to do this personally. I mean, imagine saying, hey, I'm going to just do this real quick in two hours and it turns out to be six hours and you have to go buy more tools and products because a clay bar itself isn't enough. But seriously, this is super easy. Like there, there's nothing to this right like, I'm going to just go normal speed. All up in your face. Man, boom, there you go. That is all finished up right there. I'm just gonna dry it off real quick. And now you could go ahead and, and, and apply a wax to it right now if you'd like, obviously after drying it. You could apply a wax if you'd like, but and it, it will shine it up like no doubt it will shine it up but you just have to make sure you're putting the right expectations with the customer like it's not going to remove any sores and scratches and it's not going to make a noticeable significant difference but there will be more shine to the paint if you just apply a wax right now instead of going to polishing it so now if you if we run our hand over it now obviously it's just the you know skin on on the panel here, but you don't you don't hear that rough texture anymore. And let's put this on. Hopefully, the mic's picking it up. Obviously, you're still gonna hear some like raspiness to it because I am gliding my hand over a panel here. But in person, like it's night and day difference. The texture itself is no longer there. You don't hear that texture. It just glides over it. So it is a hundred times better than what we brought it in. And you know, in this condition, you could wax it. It will make a difference, but you know, the best option here is to get it polished to really remove the swollen scratches, increase uh, clarity and gloss. But you could just wax it if you wanted to, absolutely. So you can see, hopefully it's picking up on the mic. Okay, and that's gonna wrap up this video. That's literally all you have to do for cling. Like, take that process right there of this hood and replicate it across the entire vehicle. It's literally that easy. That you don't need to overthink it. If you're watching like dozens of cling videos, stop and just go clay your vehicle right now because it's literally all you need. You'll just replicate that across the entire vehicle, like all painted surfaces and the glass. I wouldn't do it on the mirrors. I think it mars it. Um, but on the uh, glass itself, on the paint, the trim won't work either just because it's a different surface material. Um, but that's literally all you need to go out there and clay your paint. But that's gonna wrap up this video. Hopefully now you just go out there and start cleaning your vehicle. It's not that hard. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get to them well, as many as I can. And I'll see you on the next video.